We don't need to. Hey. Okay, oh, we are live. We're recording. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're live right now. We're live. All right. Cool. Yep. cool. Uh, <laughs> In case you didn't know. Okay. All right. All right. Wait. I got it. I got to do it. I'm Eric. Oh, you got to do it. Do it. Right. You're Eric. Yeah. All right. Good. Ah. Hello, and welcome to Apropos, your closure news video channel. Today, we are going to discuss some top news items in the closure world, and then we'll jump into the REPL and do some live coding. With me, I am Mia. With me today are Ray. Hello. OK, and Mike. Hello. So let's begin. That was pretty good. Yeah. Oh, you're very good, very good, very professional. Right. Well, it's up to you, actually, Mia, because you've uh, you've got the news. Oh yeah. Oh uh, well, we're going to have Stuart Halloway uh, on this show in October. I don't believe it. Uh, he said, "I've got yeah, um, I've incredible. got screenshots. I don't know if I'm allowed to. <laughs> if you want me to post screenshots of the DM, I've got receipts here." Um, so. We're going to have him in on October 18th uh, to talk about the new error messages because we cannot get enough of error messages here. Yeah. So that's really exciting. Thank you to everyone for tweeting at them until uh, Stuart <laughs> gave in. Came Hi, in. Stuart. If, if, you're, if, you're watching, to, <laughs> if you're watching, we're so excited. <laughs> that should be good. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, make sure you pop in on October 18th uh, to watch someone who uh, really knows what he's talking about, about error messages. Um, and that's, I don't know, do, what do people think about that? I think it's looking pretty cool. Um, I, I tried to look and see what they might be. You know, I was like looking at the, the examples that were being posted online. Um, and it looks like it it kind of maybe just cleans up some stuff, what I was telling, what I was saying. Like it gets rid of some of the just raw exception classes that you might see and just tells you, um, hey, this thing is, you know, a, it had a parse error during macro expansion or during analysis or whatever it was, you know, um, without just saying exception oh. info, you know. So that's, a, that's it nice. tells you, it tells you when you screw up in a macro, because that's always like, that's the worst. Yeah, I think that is part of what it, what I saw was the context of when it hit the error. Like, yeah, is it in a macro or is, is it during expansion? And yeah, that'd be nice. That's incredibly exciting. Yeah, I think also uh, it's one of these things where apparently if, I don't know what happened where the kind of tweet started and, and finished up, but apparently there was a little bit of a to and fro between Stuart and Alex, but it turns out that Stu says that, that Rich was heavily involved in the design of some of the changes, so so he has to come on as well, I think, really, you know, it didn't happen. We need receipts for him as well. Uh, do we We're the one who's doing the valor stealing here. <laughs> Can we set up a hammock uh, to like... To <laughs> Rich, we, we want you on the show. <laughs> Even if he's just snoozing in the background in the hammock. Yeah, yeah that would be really good. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we a little a little extra camera somewhere, just set up with someone with a hat on, just in a hammock. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Yeah. Fine, good, right. <laughs> All right, so the... Um... Do we want to get into that topic that you had suggested, Ray? Is, the, is that the mean? Uh, yeah, you know if, 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 you, uh, if you don't mind. Um, what, I, what I wanted to talk about was uh, something that, that kind of, well, it, it hits me on a regular basis. And, I, you know, we've what, talking about this kind of imperative stuff versus the functional stuff, you know? What was the matter? So it's kind of like oh. the, the constant struggle of uh, you're coding along and you're like, crap, all this is very imperative. How do I make it more functional? Yeah. And there are some. You're not the only one who runs into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I thought, you know, and some of the, some of the like suggested solutions are um, are quite also quite complicated, you know, um, like all these component systems and stuff like that. So I was wondering whether we should just have a little, you know, look at a small example. And I've, I've made a gist, so I, I can see if I can find it actually. Uh, as well prepared. Uh, is it one. is it the one with the snake in it? Because I've got it. I can. Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'm gonna post this in the hangout chat right now. Maybe she could. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll actually look that up as well so I can put it into Oh, Peter, now. that's me. I'm so sorry. I don't know how to use this mic. Uh, if I move it away from my face, does it get better? I think oh. it might be, uh, yeah. it's better. <laughs> All right, perfect. I thought that was Ray the entire time, so. <laughs> like, damn, Ray. Uh, Wooter suggests we have a rich screensaver over the Rapple for the first bit. So uh, if we can get a rich approved screensaver, uh, I think maybe we could work that in. Maybe some ASCII rich. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my god. So how so how are we going to share this example? <laughs> uh, well, I was thinking I'll just maybe use, um, yeah, to, to like type just it. Talk in. through it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that works. Um, hmm, that's a bit weird. Can I, is the, uh, the, the, the uh, yeah, it's, uh, I'll just uh, copy the damn thing in and we'll, I'll pretend to be typing, so I'll do like a couple of lines at a time, yeah? And I think that, that will, I'm pretty sure that will fool everyone, you know? Because <laughs> you, you and Eric are always the fastest typers in the world, so, you know, beat that one. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so I should have the REPL showing now. Let's see. There it goes. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so everyone should see that. You have a namespace impaired. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to explore some imperative uh, versus functional code, and it sounds a bit like impaired because I'm judgy, so there we are. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make a start with a little atom at the top because everyone's got one of these atoms. Okay. And then we have um, we have a database somewhere, um, and we're going to connect to it. But in fact, in this case, we're just going to um, just going to change the atom for lol. Okay. Yeah. Um, because we you know we know that all these things are just kind of side effecty anyway. Um, and we have the like. I, I, I've seen you do this before, Mike, where you have these like names and you have these star names. I, I don't know if that is a common thing, but it seems to be a common thing. Yeah. Where you have I've like the, the public thing and then the little star thing as a, as a non-public. That's, that's very common when you're writing macros and you need little helper functions. Um, yeah. But, we uh, generally use it for if you're, yeah, it's kind of a private to public thing. If you're going to, if you know that it's going to become something else in the next step, and like that's the final thing you're passing on, then the step before that is a star. Right. Hmm. Maybe I'm using it slightly wrongly here. I don't know. I mean, I think that's, I mean. yeah, that looks cool. Looks cool. All right. Yeah. OK, well, that's, that's the first. <laughs> Um, so we're kind of, it's kind of like dropping all over the place here. But basically, we've got like three, three, you know, like three, uh, well, a connect function, we've got a query function, we've got a save function, and then um, we have this uh, this slither function. We can imagine maybe it's a game or something like that where we have to connect to a database, and maybe it's just not a real time game because we're connected to databases everywhere, and <laughs> who would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it's a game where, you know, because it's like, <laughs> It's all just happening in immediate time and space. Okay, we're not interested in uh, real-time performance here. Right. So, um, so the idea is we, we we make this connection to the database, and and then uh, that if we, if we go back up the way, does anyone know how we go back up the way now in this um, thing? In the we work that one out? Oh, or not? Uh, that's like a tmuxism, and I yeah. have no clue. <laughs> There's do, we, do we want to post a link to this just in the chat 
So oh, yeah, 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 definitely. Follow along with the gist if they want. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought that's what you'd done when you said the YouTube chat. But you meant just for us, didn't you? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, yeah, I pasted in the Hangouts chat. Um, ah, okay, I okay. don't have I don't have YouTube chat access. Okay, oh, I'll try it. Can try and, oh, I, yeah. I've got it. I'll try it. Let's All right, see. perfect. Let's see if the URL works properly. Okay, so there's there the URL. All right, there it is. That's a working link. Yeah. yeah. I'm clicking it. Yeah. Beautiful. For me. Okay. Beautiful. So everyone can follow along at home. It's yeah, it's not a whole lot of code, but it's too much to fit on one screen. Yeah, that's you know But it's reptile reptile is coming, okay? <laughs> <laughs> well we'll be able to well, we'll be actually able to very easily scroll forwards and backwards. But um yeah, okay. So so the idea here is um if I say something like slither one, two, three, four, then that will that will find up the snake and it will <clears> change <throat> the um Oh, uh, da, da, da. yeah. With the which the snake originally is in a status of slinking, and this thing will change it to slithering. So you know that's nice. <laughs> I'm not actually sure exactly what the difference is between slinking and slithering, but I'm guessing slinking is kind of quiet, and <laughs> slithering is active. Maybe it's Mia, you could give me a bit more of a you know semantics there. I don't know. She's not very graceful. I mean, she doesn't really slink. She kind of sometimes she like chunks around, where she like throws her whole body uh, wow. somewhere, and sometimes she slithers. But I've never seen her slink. Never seen her slink. That's a shame. Yeah. I don't think you're using that word right. Maybe it's, hmm. I think isn't it slinking when they're just hanging around? Cat isn't slink. It? Cat slink. Oh, maybe it's, okay. okay. Fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What do snakes do when they're still then? Because hmm. I'm happy to they bask. I'm happy. They bask. I'm happy. All right, okay, bask. Or maybe it's them moving from basking to slithering. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> let's let's go back up the way and, and change change the, the status here then from, from Yeah. The status there is slinking. We're gonna have um, Oh god. Oh god. Oh, Chris. <laughs> oh my god. No, don't want that. I just <laughs> made full screen there. What do we do? How do we get that? How do we what do we do? Just like think oh, yeah, okay, let me do that. Yeah, right. So now if I go back up yeah. to Slytherin. Okay, it's still slithering, but it was basking. I don't think it made any difference. Okay, now, okay. <laughs> but the point is, we've got all this shit going on. The main, the main thing that we want to speak about is not the basking snake or the slinking snake. The main thing is we want to say that um, we have, do we all agree this is a kind of, like an example of the kind of stuff that we do sometimes with things that, that look a bit awkward, but we have this global state and we, we yep. get something from a database and we change it and we save it back. Mm-hmm. Something we try to avoid, but I think there's probably like a few namespaces hidden in the corner that people try not to look at on purpose. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I guess in your case, you're more of a pipeline, aren't you? Where yeah, like, come, come that's part of the reason that. On. Yeah, it's part of the reason why uh, is we are trying to avoid things like this. But I remember um, on some of the Postgres apps, we definitely have a namespace mm. that looks like this. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's a pretty common pattern. For, for databases. Um, now, I th you know, I think there's a, um, do you agree with that, Mike? Is that something that you kind of think you've seen before? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're basically, um, you have a side effect where you're, well, you're changing a database connection and then you are getting something from the external world, right? And then you're doing some nice pure stuff and then you're pushing it back out to the world. You're doing another side yeah. effect at the end. Yeah. 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 And it makes that kind of code like Slither is now hard to test and or I mean Yeah. I mean, you know, what what is Slither Slither's got all this stuff in there. Yeah. So maybe it's we maybe it's we that's where we can kind of start. Uh, what I was thinking about first of all was maybe it's we like all these functions, instead of these functions like like relying on this global connection. 
Maybe okay. we could fix it because that seems a bit weird as well to me, having this global connection. Whereas what we should really do normally is pass the connection into the functions. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that would, in in this case, what we do is we'd have to uh, we'd have to change slither a little bit so that instead of just like having this side effective thing here, we could have that as um, as an actual thing that we can. I know eventually we're gonna probably change slither, but we'll do it bit by bit, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have this connection and then when we do a query, we'll pass in connection. Yeah, because right now query, um, let's see, I'm looking at it real quick in the gist. Query will, I guess it deals with, oh, yeah, it takes a connection as an argument. Um, oh man, oh Jesus. What would happen there? But yeah, they're all relying on this global connection. Is your rep messed up now? It's beeping. Uh, yeah, I think that's okay now. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we have to go and quickly uh, go back and change um, save because uh, and because save at the moment relies on a kind of global connection. So instead of doing that, we we get a connection passed in. Okay. Get rid of that one there and call it connection. Yeah. So even though that's like still dealing with like the external world, it feels better for some reason. Like it's not, you know, you're passing okay. the connection into it rather than it yeah. being. It's just the argument that global variables are bad. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Yep. Most of the sort of um, pure function that you end up getting involved in are these kind of things where you have these like global co-effects where the world is what it is, you know? So mm -hmm. if, if, if it's like that, if, if save relies on some external action happening on that thing that's inside of itself, then we don't know how to test it anymore, do we? And we can't pass it different connections to different things. So, yep. so this is better, I think, because then we can we can say, okay, we're we're passing this connection around. Now, I think in theory that should be it, because you know the code doesn't really do very much. So if we slither, oh no, hang on, yeah, query. Okay, maybe that didn't do query. Connection query, connection query, query. Where's query? Come on. Yeah. This is the lovely thing about um, refactoring closure as well, isn't it? In a in a REPL like this, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why sometimes tools are good. Uh, um... Ah, Bruce. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Right. Uh, come on, Slither. Is there a fast way of going back up? There we go. Okay, so is there a fast way of going back up the way? Like like one, one thing at a time, like uh, control B or something, or something like that, or control H or? Like if you want to go a whole form at a time rather than? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Okay, fine, doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing. I mean, you know, the first thing is like, then we've kind of got this situation where now where we're, um, we're at least passing the connection everywhere. So maybe we need to look, like you say, again, at, at breaking up slither a little bit because that's got a lot of shit going on there. Yeah. And we want so, to pass connection into him as well, really, don't we? Probably, yeah. The, when I so, look at that, when I look at slither, um, it's like you can kind of see where the, um, where the bad stuff is, where the side effects are. And then right in the middle, of all that is a little bit of pure goodness. Uh, yeah. yeah. There's, there's like, uh, well, if you like up to the point where it does the query, that's all side effect stuff. And then there's a little bit of pure code right in the middle and then up to the point where you save. Yeah, exactly. So maybe we just change to the, to take a connection. Okay. 
yeah. and then it just returns back the yeah. updated snake. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because again, yeah. the idea is that you pass some parameters in, it operates on those parameters, then it returns some data back. Okay. Yeah. I'm with you. I mean, the other, the other argument is maybe is even not to pass in, you know, and I, well, maybe we'll do it bit by bit. So we'll pass the connection in first. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know how you delete all this shit. <laughs> oh, you probably just can. You can probably. Oh, can't you just? <laughs> I feel like I just should type it back in again. <laughs> well, so you're in a you're in like in a little buffer there, right? That Bruce made. Um, yeah. So I would suspect that you can like you can move your cursor and then hit Control K to delete to the end of the line. Um, oh yeah. Like if you if you want to get rid of that first let form, right? You're trying to get rid of connection, right? Because that's what you're passing in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, move the cursor right there and then hit Control K. See what happens. Control K. Okay, so that yeah, deletes to the line. line. And you could do that for the other lines. They'll still be there, right? And, and then you could like, yeah, Control K that stuff away and Control K the next stuff away. Right. And now you could probably, if you really wanted to, you could back up with backspaces to delete those extra new lines. And join. One of these days we'll definitely yeah, like a get, a, get a lesson in this stuff. Uh, right, so whoa, too much. Oops, there we so, go. Oh, that looks much better. Now oh, it's getting nice. Okay, good. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh Wait, god. Is it what still happened? Ah oh, shit. Do you think you pressed up arrow or something like that? I pressed up arrow. I pressed up arrow. Oh, it's okay. It's still there. Oh, interesting. So the buffer's still there. You just haven't hit return. <laughs> <This is> like... <laughs> the harder, it's this okay. The, the more, the more you flail, the more you flail at this. Uh, the yeah. more viewers we've been getting. So uh, oh, people, good, just people just tune in to <laughs> to enjoy the pain. <laughs> well, we said that, <laughs> we said this at the very beginning, didn't we? You know, it's like <laughs> people failing. <laughs> On YouTube is the uh, is the attraction <laughs> for most of these things. So you know, I'm living up to the brand here. You know? <laughs> uh, right. So does that actually now? So the one, two, three, four. That's not going to work. We need to pass in the connection. But I'm just going to pass in maybe, something. Yeah. I'm just going to pass in a keyword or something. Okay. Yeah. Which is which is you know the pretend connection. Okay. Mm -hmm. and in theory, that should all work. Yeah. Cool. Um, so it's some something will manufacture that connection. Shut up, all right? Yeah. So <laughs> uh, right. So Even that's good. Fake connections. All right. I know. I know. A terrible guy. Yeah. Um, so then, as we get rid of this saving business as well, and also the querying business, even I don't know. Well, interesting question for you guys. Yeah. What do we do? Do we? Where do we? Where are we going to have this? Um, uh, this other stuff. So maybe we we do the we do this all in a free form, or what are we going to call this thing, which does the lookup in, in the, the database and the saving stuff? How do we? How do you think we should organize that? Well, my the only thought I have in my mind right now um, is taking that that query call that's in there. Like if you imagined the query expression, right, and taking it. And making it into an argument, and also, um, yeah, I would just mm -hmm. and I would get rid of the save. So that uh, what what that leads to, I guess, where I'm going with that is that you would end up with like a a thing that updates a snake in a pure way. Yeah, uh, and then you'd be able to uh, test with different queries as well. So so what what? So I would, just just give a snake then. Um, no connection. So let's see, your snake is the first of the query of the connection. So I guess you could pass in query results or something like that. Um, like the first, the the fact that you're calling first on it um, is a little bit of complexity that you could get rid of by just doing, like you said, just passing a snake. Because that 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 becomes clearer, right? You're just saying, hey, snake, slither. You're not worried about like trying to get the first of a query result. And Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I like that. All right, so... So, oh, I'm going to do a, the fancy stuff now. The control K. We, we don't get that one. We just do control K. Uh, yeah. Uh, we don't need a let anymore, do we? It's really simple now. In fact, we don't need we don't need anything like this. 
Uh, don't forget to leave the connection in the arguments, though. Why? Well, we're still passing in the connection, right? Oh, we're going to get rid of it, aren't we? We're going to get rid of this, and it's just going to be that. Yeah, so you're not really saving either in that function. It's just yep, no, it's, it's just, just changing the state to slither. Yeah, that, now that's a pure function. Yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, we've got to get this data from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like when you're using Kafka and stuff, what do you do? You just set up a connection and make a query, then pass it on, or like onto your pure functions like this, Mia? Or do you, um, how do you get your data? Do you like go and grab it in a, in a pipeline and just like, is it just fed in from, from the ether? You know? <laughs> um, we use the Kafka Streams API to do it. So, uh, there's a bunch of, Definitely very frightening Java code, uh, I think, <laughs> that just hides all of this. So by the time we get it, um, we are performing transforms on streams and then uh, publishing a new message to a new stream. Right. OK, so maybe this is, this is that model there where we just, you know, in a free form REPL, we just make the query would kind of fit. Yeah. yeah. Or we just we just say uh, something like um, query. I mean, we give it the fake connection again. Give it the ID of the snake. One, two, three, four. God knows where we got that from. That gives us this back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we can then just say. I guess we can just say slither to that, can't we? Yeah. Ooh, look, it's even helping us. Oh. Now we're talking. That is nice, yeah. Oh! oh because no. it gives, right now, but it's okay. We can do first here. That's all right. Mm -hmm. And. Okay. We, ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there's yeah. the ambiguity between is. what does return mean. Yeah. Okay, so. All right, so so we see here it was basking and now it's slithering. So that's that's kind of nice, isn't it? You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because we couldn't really see it before. You know, we couldn't see it was basking at all, and now we can see what it was before. We can see what it was after, and we can like start to bring these things together a little bit, which is nice. Uh, do we want to query it again and see if it's still slithering? At the very top. Oh, it's basking. It's pure, I see. It's, yep. It hasn't changed. You know? yep. It's good. Uh, so so the other thing, the other thing that maybe is we want to put at the end here is the save, isn't it? So I don't remember how save worked now. I think we just said to save at the we just have we just pass the snake. I think we also maybe just have to pass the funky connection. Yeah, yeah. Right. we need to update that. Yeah, so that worked. And uh it looks a bit weird now though. But that's so that that is um you can kind of now more clearly see the side effects and the pure parts, right? Yeah, you have the query, yeah. um, then the the what I want to call the update function, a little slither function. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then the save back. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, so th that's fine. But what are we going to do about like uh, about that? Because it's it, the other thing I was thinking was that like we've done some nice things with clearing up like pure functions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but actually, one of the problems we've got here is that now things like connection become a look, there's a lot of boilerplate around this, you know, where connection especially is just like, just noise on the line there, isn't it, you know? Yeah, the, the only thought I have right now, and this is just speaking out loud, um, is that you could have, you could have a, a function that is dedicated towards, to the idea of, uh, given a key for a snake, the one, two, three, four, getting that snake out of the database, applying an update function to that snake, 
whatever, you know, an arbitrary update function and then saving that result back into the database. Okay. So in other words, something like refactored slither. So it's kind of like, it's just an update function and it takes a function that does the transform. Yeah, I could try writing that. I don't know if that's where you were going to go. Maybe this would be like a side branch in ex exploration. Let's do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would be f that's a, quite a nice like high order approach, isn't it? Because let me try that. Let's see. You know. Sorry about my mechanical keyboard. Don't, don't worry about it. it right um, so, uh, and I think this function probably needs to take um, probably needs a connection just to be able to yeah. do anything, and yeah. perhaps a. And then a, um, a status and update function, yeah. Those three things, maybe. You can, yeah. And then you would define that by doing, um, I use a thread, but I'm just going to do let snake be You can use the connection you were passed in. Yes, thank you. No fake connections. I'm using the real one. Yeah, use the real one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, again, we want to we want to use all the inputs. You know, <laughs> all the inputs. Okay, and then um, I don't know. You can make this pretty, but I'm gonna make it uh, now that we have the snake. Um, Something like that. Yep. I can spell it correctly. Enough friends. You don't put enough, but one more. It'll always work. Okay. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is um that that feels a little better, I guess, in some sense. Like Okay, so let's have a look at how it looks then. So we say in this case, we the update function is what the slither. Yeah. So, so we can just say update call snake it. connection. Let me try three, calling four, it. Slither. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yay! There it is. Nice. Yeah. Do, so, uh, that's do, pretty we good. To, do we want to give this an exclamation point at the end of its name to because uh, it is mutating state here? Yeah, that's that's one of the things I was going to talk about actually as well. Yeah, because spot on there. Yeah, I'd actually written something down and you got straight to it. <laughs> yeah, because if we've got impure functions, then we should mark it like mm -hmm. with a bang. Yeah, is that is that the thing that everyone does? The the bang things because I, I hear different people saying this different ways of doing things, but bang seems it's to a, be a. Yeah. It's a useful way to know that you are mutating something. Uh, yeah. Which should so. be a cause for alarm. <laughs> or not alarm, but you know. Yeah. It's more like the side effecting thing, isn't it, than the mutation per se. But yeah. Yeah. Let's see. And this is bothering me. I have to put this back on the previous line. Okay. Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, it would be horrible otherwise. Okay. Now we're expressing nice. our intent. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is quite nice. Yeah, the other, the other way I was going to go with this was, uh, you know, the, okay. the, the, the nice thing about this is that, you know, you can kind of, if we, if we look at this updated version of everything, then it's nice, it's composable. Um, it's getting past everything in that it needs, you know. But the, the interesting question is, like, how does how does the core how does the core closure team deal with this? And I was thinking that like a, an example here, that it's not a great not a great analogy, but it's kind of similar. Is like the file resources that they have, like this. If you have something that you have open for a short period of time, mm -hmm. you do something on it, and then it should get cleaned up and closed. Because the problem we've got here now to me is that like we've got this connection from somewhere and it's like it was either a global state or now we're making it you know, I don't know where we're getting this connection from. It's a fake thing. Yeah. yeah. But but what's what's interesting about it is that um is that we 
we don't we don't have any cleanup operations on it. You know, it's a kind of free floating resource. And if we're dealing with files, for instance, in Clojure, we have this with open macro. Right. So I mean, I don't know if we've got time to write a <laughs> with DB macro or with connection macro. Um, but that would be the kind of thing I might like to do, maybe, is to, to, to be the next level. So every time you make a call, you essentially pass it the database connection that mm -hmm. you, you, know, you connect to this database, and then you do your operations, and then it closes the database. It cleans yep. up automatically for you. you know? That seems like, a, like the next step to me. Yeah. There, there's one small thing that I would do that's uh, before that. That oh, yeah, cool. is yeah. bothering me. So let's say, um, so that, well, I'm following where you're going, but I was backing up my mind a little bit about what if the update function itself takes arguments, like the slither function takes a snake. But what if you what if you had like something else that was like, what did you call it, stinking or something like that, <laughs> or basking, <laughs> or slinking, basking, slinking, yeah. basking. Um, but what if you know what if one of those functions took a snake plus an argument to say like, oh yeah, bask. Um, like know, a direction or something. Ask north, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So, to to address that would be, um, I would add like in here. I think I'm just thinking out loud again. I think this would work if I did this, and then ah, crap. What do I do now? Let's see. I want to basically be able to pass in extra args. Mm. But this doesn't. I think I messed it up. Why? Yeah, maybe it is right. Let's try it again. So it should still work even with no arguments. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Cool. Maybe it is right. So then we could um we could change the 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 update function to do something. Mm. All right. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. Um, good. I think I'm convinced that's right. Yeah. So I just passed in another function in it. So that would have theoretically actually changed the snake in the database to have a foo two. I mean, that was. I'm sorry. That I wanted to go off on that tangent because that was bothering me. I was just thinking about like the way update functions work and. Yeah, but that's nicer because, like you say, you've got more of an open uh, open function call model there. Then, so this this it is a bit like um, like swap, right? Like you, it, for swap, you pass an atom, and you know that swap is going to modify the thing that's in that atom. Um, and the fact that we're passing in the snake ID, I guess, is just the way it is. <laughs> you have to identify. You have to identify the thing. Maybe that's like if you want to say update in. You know, you could try to move that ID somewhere else. But I, I don't know. I don't have any immediate ideas on that. Yeah. Well, I mean, partly the part problem here is that you kind of we're kind of mixing concerns that, like, we're we're not we haven't got the query of the snake. We haven't actually got a snake. That's the only thing that's bothering me slightly. Oh yeah, so you're right. We haven't we haven't actually got we haven't got a visible snake. We're saying here's an idea of a snake. Look, find it somewhere, and then update it using this. So I I, mm -hmm. I would tend to think that we should have two things, like you know, get the snake, and then we do some update function. Mm -hmm. and maybe maybe that's the second part where we update the snake. Yeah, so so like we're all you know there's... because what if we wanted like to operate on three snakes at a time, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. So so one one place my mind is going is the multi snake that... game, you know? It does. Yeah. Seem snakes have, and ladders. It, it also it does seem to have a lot of arguments. It almost seems like it should be multi arity. Mm. And also, when you get to this case where you've got lots of arguments, well. Are you really should, yeah. should you just use a map or something at that point with some keys, you know? 
I don't know. It's like all of these things. As you as you get to to be a bit more complicated, it starts to look a bit uglier. You know. It was, I, I, it, it was it was very beautiful. I'm kind of... <laughs> <laughs> the imperative world was so easy. <laughs> no, the it, no, we we made it. We fixed it, and now. Uh... <laughs> you think it's going off now? You think it's like you know, Mike's ruining it for us. No, I'm, I don't. Trying, I'm just trying to force it to the end. Uh... <laughs> don't think Mike's ruining it. Okay, good. Phew. Okay. But that's not going to work. But that's that's the kind of model is you want to say swap this thing. Yep. And you're trying to you're trying to update, and then you say which one snake one two three four. It, yeah. That's that's the model where like the database is a gigantic map or you know yeah. an atom containing a single value. Um, so we we have like we're dealing with a relational database where we have to give it a key to talk about that snake. That's fine. I gotta go. I gotta oh, get yeah, on so yeah, you're you're running late. So. I gotta get on a train. All right. Bye yeah, everyone. See you next time, yeah. yeah. Thanks, yeah. Mia. See you see in you two later. weeks. Okay. Cheers. Uh yeah, I take your point there, Mike. Um again, it's just like this whole we're we're getting a lot of mixing of things like with the relational database and yeah. the IDs and all these kind of things, you know. So a lot of concerns being mixed up here. I, th I feel it's very it's very normal. I think in these imperative situations to be a bit like that, you know, because what, we wouldn't really do this in memory, would you? You wouldn't like say, okay, right, look up a number one, two, three, four. Where's it going to come from? You know, you'd kind of and again, it's that that it's that activity there it doesn't seem very composable to me. Yeah. So. Well, if, so I right to, if we wanted to map over a list of snakes, for instance, mm -hmm. would you would you do it? I mean, I, I've never done it like this, where I could say I'll map and then I'll write a function that does swaps. Oh, that's interesting. Or something like that. Would you do that? I mean, it would, it would look weird to me. But I mean, we could do it. It wouldn't be a problem. Too. Yeah. So yeah. So right now, this update snake is kind of baked in. <laughs> to it this idea of just dealing with one one particular snake hmm. and and it's got the query <laughs> baked into it as well so it, the yeah. query knows how to get one snake yeah yeah, yeah. yeah well, actually like, the query is getting multiple snakes that's why we have to do the first on it but, oh right you're right yeah you know, mm -hmm. this is the other thing that's slightly mixed up that's why I, I put that first in there deliberately and like the results as a as a set because that's how relational databases work you know mm. you normally make a query and you get even if you get, well, sometimes if you get, they normally have result sets. So sometimes there's a bit of syntax sugar on the, on the thing that will bring back just one result. But, but often you have to do a, you know, you have to do a check to see if the count is one and then you just take the first one or there's all kinds of other crap you've got to deal with. But basically you normally get a list back. So in this case, you do get a list back, but we're kind of saying first and but we're losing that, that, that collection, aren't we? That sequence. Yes. Somewhere yeah. here. Yeah. So, so this, um, in this particular case, I, I know, like when you talk about like imperative programming, in this case, we're, um, we're fetching, we're doing like a read and a modify and a write. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's that pattern. Um, but yeah. a lot of imperative stuff is like a whole sequence of things that you do to stuff, right? You you read something, maybe read something else from somewhere else, then you compose them together, then you. Well, I mean, I, I deliberately made this a very trivial example so it would be a bit easier to talk around. Because, oh yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it's the most trivial bit of imperative code I could imagine, where you know you mm -hmm. literally connect to a database, you query it, um, you update it, you serve it back. And it all, everything has to happen in that kind of order. Yeah. So, yeah. so that you know, the question is, well, if we, you know, if we get those, if we get like a list of snakes out of the database, maybe we can do something with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Filter them in memory and stuff like that. Yes. Yeah. So by by making an update snake function, even though it kind of looks appealing because it mm. just updates it for you magically, it fetches in and puts it back in. That kind of yeah. limits you because it's baked in. It's baked that pattern into it of the fetch, modify, and write. Right, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, I I don't even find myself writing those kind of functions that often, where you like you bake in the pattern into it. Um, 
like that, you know, specifically. Um, usually you just have like, if you have a bunch of imperative stuff, you just, you know, write the code that does it and then um, try try to factor out the functional stuff. You know? <laughs> just shut your eyes. <laughs> shut your eyes while you're, yeah. Or, it's, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Try to minimize that amount, that bit of that body of code that's doing the imperative, yeah. you know, IO, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? Because we've kind of like, we've landed in the end, like with this update snake, we've got the query in the middle there. And that's, that, that's the bit of, that's a bit bad, you know, yeah, to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So maybe you're right. I mean, in the end, maybe it's, maybe it's the original version of it, modulo the kind of, connection handling bit mm -hmm. was kind of okay, you know? Yeah. In the sense that, you know, maybe, again, not slither maybe, but you would normally have just some function that would say, okay, well, here's a query, get the data, now I'm going to do something with it and then write it back. And then you would just, you would just like freely associate on that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, that's roughly what I, you know, like, there's no way around doing I/O, right? You have to do it at some point. Sure, yeah. And like you shut, you shut your eyes when you're doing a recline. <laughs> but my my main strategy, I guess, is to try to find the um, functional bits, <clears throat> pull them out, is that do that kind of separation. Um, yeah. Well, what I was thinking, like like I said, the next bit though was like, okay, yeah. what, what do you think about this like with DB type thing? Okay. Yeah. With connection, so, because. You know, one of one of the definitely with this kind of thing, it's sort of um, oh, we've got a source. Okay. Well, let's see. And that happens. Maybe something's wrong, but I'm thinking it might just be that. Okay, good. So that is the source for the with open function. Um, right, yeah. So, you know, I've written various versions of this in the past to have with connections actually, or with, with other types of things. Um, unfortunately, I haven't got a copy, you know, that I can paste in. <laughs> Should do that for the next version of the show. <laughs> So the, so the only thing that makes this specific to anything, I think, is the um, that little close call right there, right? The dot close call, yeah. And in fact, it just works on closable things. So if you imagine that you're, and in fact, it's often the case with databases that mm -hmm. the drivers have a close function. So actually, you can just use with open as long as it implements closable, if I remember rightly, in Java. Yeah, I think... I think yeah. that's probably true. No, is there is there a with open for um, for closure script? Because I, I don't know if files like Node.js files. No, know. that's actually that's what I've done in the past. I've actually written a with open for Node.js, I think. Because I don't think they operate in quite the same way. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I, I added one of those to, to Plonk, for example, because Plonk yeah. does I/O and stuff like that, so yeah. you find that you want it with open, and and there's no like I closable. I don't think. No, I can't remember. But if we were to make this again, and we were to say like this thing, if we said um, mm -hmm. like instead of update snake, we basically uh, can we just kind of essentially say. Like this is with open. Uh huh. We all go wrong. Um, and I think you just said something like um, DB is mm -hmm. connection, something like that. But obviously, DB doesn't have a close on it. But, uh, then you do the update snake. Mm hmm. Uh, I don't think you need to pass in that. You need to pass in DB, I guess. Yep. And you're all good. And yeah, it doesn't have close, but that that's mm -hmm. starting to look a bit nicer to me, um, because 
the, the connection itself is definitely a side effective thing you know yeah yeah um because it's uh you know it holds memory and all those kind of things you know mm -hmm. so i think i think that's the next the next thing that you would do maybe is to kind of if you're dealing with databases if you have a like i know people have connection pools and stuff like that yeah, but yeah. it seems to me that if you were to i think and i think some of the jdbc drivers for for closure have this type of with db type macros to, yeah. to manage those connection pools um for that reason you know yeah it would probably get a, a connection out of the pool or block until it can get one maybe and yeah and then when mm -hmm. it instead of doing a close like it kind of releases it it would just releases the connection back to the pool yeah but it looks all very nice from the kind of um that perspective you know yeah yeah uh yeah so i think i think this is this is this is probably you know in terms of like like you say separating out the pure functions mm -hmm. and doing these kind of things is good the problem with a macro of course is that you you start to lose the 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 composability of it yes yeah you know you can't you, you'd have to have with open like query snake update snake that's probably what you would do here i'm guessing is you know you put the query here mm -hmm. okay yeah um in that with yeah. open mm -hmm. and it's a bit more obvious again so you say query and i can't remember i guess db again and uh you know one two three four i think that's right yeah Maybe should, that would be a let actually, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd put it in so you'd let that result. Yeah. yeah. That would be the snake. And then you put the parentheses somewhere. Um, so that would be fine. And then yeah. the update snake would happen. You would just call Slither on Snake. Before, but, um, sorry? Then you just call Slither on Snake because you have it now. Yeah, so you've updated the DB and then you. Something like that, so I'm yeah, saying. something like that. Slither on the mm -hmm. snake. And maybe save instead of update snake. Save DB, slither snake. Yeah, something along those lines where you have. Um, you kind of know it's a database because you I kind of do that. So maybe you, I don't know, maybe you should put a namespace the there. Okay. It's not a snake. Who knows whether this is actually? It's definitely not going to work, but that kind of form idea, looks yeah. looks quite nice, you know. Um, where everything is composed and it's wrapped up nicely, you know. So you kind of know, okay, that you you're getting this connection from somewhere. That's very clear. It's not yeah. some global <clears throat> resource somewhere. You're passing it around nicely, and it's getting closed up um, through this this with open macro. Yeah, and then there's always <laughs> there's that trick where if you um, like if you use with open on a file, and then you perhaps get a line seek out of that file, uh, and you do something, you do something that basically returns a lazy sequence <laughs> from that with open macro. Um, then then you, I guess you're laughing because you know what happens then. <laughs> you, you basically. Uh, you basically have the the with open macro will close the file on you uh, yeah, before yeah. your lazy sequence has been realized. Yeah, yeah. So in that that's kind of a mess because then you just have to do a do all or something like that to force it to realize. Yeah. That. Well, that's. I mean, this is the other. This is the other thing that that you and I have talked about before, which is the fact that like all of this stuff is kind of in the Java world. This is kind of like it looks fairly straightforward because you know you can do things that okay forgetting the um the lazy sequence even yeah in java you the things are tend to be kind of synchronous so you say with open you do something you let this mm -hmm. and then the, the the sequence things you know maybe it's the, they're a bit of a confusing part like you say yeah. but yeah. when you're when you're in like the closure script world opening a database is is synchronous and Oh, right. Yeah. Saving, you know, querying is asynchronous and persisting is asynchronous. So that yeah. be, all of this stuff becomes even more complicated then because you've got all this uh, promises or callbacks yep. to deal with and integrate. So, 
you know, we'll talk about that another time, I think, but yeah, yeah. again, people tend to use like macros and stuff like that to wrap those things up, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, um, yeah, the other thing, the other thing that I've been, uh, we kind of like where, where we are with this stuff is, is not too bad, I think, but people often say, well, you know, if you want to test this against different databases or something like that, like a test environment or a production environment, then maybe it would be better to have all of this kind of stuff in a, in a file somewhere, in a configuration file somewhere, so you can pass in a test database sometimes when it's the, when it's the test environment and the production database when it's the production environment. Right, yeah. Um, and I think that's okay. I mean, to me, we can, we can do that without having a very big, um, like, I think you can have that in like a, just an Eden file with an env, basically. I don't yeah. think we need a big component system to do it or a big, um, uh, any kind of um, system to make it work. That's true. Yeah. You um, could just slurp in some Eden and yeah, and that, that simple model works. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the downside about it, and I'm, mm -hmm. it's an interesting, I, I've heard these sort of upsides and downsides recently because I was looking at Integrant, which is this thing from, um, from James Reeves. And it's this one of a family of all of these things like Integrant and Mount. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. component and all these other things and what they what they argue is that in in these kind of data driven systems then you can see your components more clearly you know the, uh, your dependencies sorry more clearly than you can in code but i think this code is not too bad actually i think with this code you can kind of see what's going on it is relatively transparent yeah yeah um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm, 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 I really want to sort of hear a really convincing argument for these um, systems. And apart oh, okay. from the reloadable workflows, I, I don't really get it. You know, we've had this discussion before, but okay. yeah. um, I'm still, I'm still not entirely convinced. So maybe we have to have some guy or some girl come on and tell us, or some lady or some man, um, tell us about what uh, why these things are so important. No, I think it's a valid debate. Uh, <laughs> you don't have to use component or something like that, uh, and especially like if your code base is pretty simple. I think Eric even said that he's like he's never used it. Yeah. Um, but if you have a gigantic code base and lots of people working on it, and you have you have stuff to bring up and bring down in the right order, and you need you know you need to be able to reload stuff on the fly. I guess if it gets it's beyond a certain size of code base or something or complexity, then maybe it starts to pay for itself. But I've always, I've always debated in my mind like whether or not to use that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, people do. I mean, some people love it. So there's obviously some value for for some for some systems. Um, yeah. But uh, I've only really worked on one big system where they used um, component, and I, and I thought it was a bit. I didn't think it, it didn't help me to grok what the system looked like, actually. It, it kind of had the opposite effect. I, I was confused because I had to look in too many places to, yeah, yeah. to work out what was going on. That is a consequence because it's almost a little bit of magic. Like you're like, yeah, where exactly. do we, what happens next? And then it's like, yeah, there's this framework <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the bit which I didn't like about stuff like Spring was because oh, man. Yeah. I, I know on the one hand, you want to kind of write your pure functions and stuff, but but this this kind of um... that's exactly what would drive me crazy about Spring was the inability to see what was going to occur because it yeah. was kind of implicit in these XML files. Yeah. And, and yeah. It's like I just want I want to see the actual chain of code that leads to this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's always like the, it's this little tension between you know looking at something like this and saying, oh yeah, but I can see it on a, on a kind of on a higher level, I can see that there's some repetition of the code here, and mm -hmm. I, I could apply a bit of magic over the top of it, or a bit of cleanup over the top of it, which would make it more tractable. Yeah. You know. But anyway, yeah. All right. So, well, that was that's kind of what I had, Mike, in terms of um, in terms of like imperative versus functional. I mean, there's definitely you know, more to talk about. 
And like I say, maybe just we could have a look at closure script as well. Um, the async stuff there, because that would be, that's a definitely a, a more complicated version of this. Yeah, the whole promises versus core async and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm still trying to get all that straight in my head too. Like, when do you use what? And, you know, if you use reframe, it's got its own <laughs> event or asynchronous model built into it. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because that's like a whole signal graph, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which they, I, I think they had it in core async at the beginning, but it was, they said it was too slow to, slower, okay. to go to, to, to resolve, you know, to fully resolve the graph, yeah. Yeah, and all that stuff is messy, no matter which way you look at it, right? <laughs> we all know that the pure functions are the nice ones. And yeah. It's just a matter yeah. of trying to like isolate the messiness and keep it off in the corner and small. Yeah, 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 yeah. And and like to be like just try and be honest about the stuff mm -hmm. that does make changes, you know, and that try and keep an eye out for it. So when you see things, I always like from my perspective, if I see something in a function that didn't come into that function, I get yeah. suspicious. Yep. I get very suspicious then. And I also don't I'm not a great fan of functions that don't return things. You know? Right. Yes. Yeah. So I like functions to return, even if they just return the thing that they got. Mm -hmm. um, then I, I like that a little bit better because then it, you, it, it makes it more composable. You know, where things don't return something, it's like, well, what does the caller do now? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I gave you something. What, what, did, what you did you do with it? Yeah. You know? It's like <laughs> just basically bashed on an atom or something like that inside yeah. the function. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I, I like to I like to see functions that that get something in and then give something back, you know, and ideally with some kind of transform. Yeah, yeah. and then and then if it's not like that, then you kind of start to think, well, yeah, okay, this is this is not pure anymore, and we need to do this kind of process to to isolate it out a bit more and find out what what it's operating on that you know. It, it it gets by magic and how can we make that more explicit yeah yeah but this is one of the things i like about closure is you can kind of make things more explicit in a fairly straightforward way um now maybe maybe at a certain point with these component things you start to make things more implicit again and that can be a benefit like you say when things get to a certain size or a certain scale um i, I guess yeah. but but still, you should always kind of know that that what you're getting in is, you know, that, that what you're operating on is as a result of the inputs. Yeah, I like I like pure functions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on that happy note, maybe we should <laughs> call it a day. Okay. Yeah, I think this is pretty good. I think this is. It's always. Even though we talked about it, this imperative versus functional is not going away. It, it will always plague us, right? We'll always be struggling with this concept and trying to make our code more robust and in the face of all the all the I/O that it has to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I, 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 I think there there aren't any truly magic solutions, um, other than like you say, trying to get as much into the pure stuff as possible. And then try and really isolate at the edges all the stuff that isn't pure. Yeah, yeah. But probably even then, there are, again, there are probably all kinds of trade-offs around that as well because people say things like, "Oh, you know, I want to operate on this data very quickly because there is a side effect, so you can't always ignore these side effects because you have to do some maybe you have to do some transaction or something that really matters." In the database because that's how sql databases work yeah so buy datomic and <laughs> keep pure functions all right yeah i think this is pretty good all right. all right man okay right well see you next time eh? okay later on okay bye bye guys